That's interesting, Diane, because uh, clearly infection is something that both periodontics and endodontics have in common. And there are studies now that are showing that in patients that have diabetes and uncontrolled diabet uh, diabetics, the post-operative incidence of complications and infections are higher. And in fact, in patients that have uncontrolled diabetes, uh, endodontically uh, induced infections should be controlled very aggressively and very quickly as these infections tend to spread very quickly along the fascial spaces and yes. could be become very dangerous very quickly. Um, these patients are medically compromised and their immune system is clearly um, uh, suppressed. Uh, and so, you know, the, the treatment has to be very aggressive. Mm -hmm. So that's interesting. We had a good conversation about diabetes and what, 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 you know, what it is and so on. But what are, s obviously it's related not only to the genotype, but some behavioral things that you could do in terms of your nutrition to help curtail or reduce the risk of diabetes. Uh, and uh, in that case, I'd like to ask you, what are some of the uh, best practices for nutrition to, um, you know, to deal with this disease and prevent it? Yes, well, certainly a discussion about diabetes wouldn't be complete without discussing weight management and also the types of foods that can help patients control their glucose levels. So um, first, why don't we take a look at the five most obese nations in the world and the five thinnest nations so we can um, maybe learn from their eating and lifestyle habits. The fifth most obese nation in the world is the United Kingdom. Number four is New Zealand. Hmm. Number three is Chile. Hmm. Number two is Mexico. And well, I don't know if you can guess. I don't know if I can guess what the number one fattest nation of the, uh, the um, but let me just take a wild guess that I think we're already, uh, we're, we're sitting here. Well. Yeah. In the U.S., unfortunately. In the U.S., we always want to be number one. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> and now let's take a look at the five thinnest nations. And also another piece of trivia in the United States, 50% of American cats and dogs are also obese. Wow. Yes. That's interesting. The fifth thinnest nation is Italy, followed by number four, Norway. Number three is Switzerland. Number two is Korea. And can you take a guess the number one? Thinnest nation? Is it China? Close. Somewhere near China? Somewhere near China. <laughs> <laughs> um, it is the Japan. Japan. Huh? The thinnest nation and also the nation with the highest life expectancy. Oh. Mm -hmm. It's interesting if the, there's a correlation there, you might guess, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Clearly mm -hmm. the diet has something to do with it. Yes. And the two diets that are the most effective for weight control and also managing um, glucose levels are the Mediterranean diet and the Okinawa diet from Japan. In this country, we have a little bit of a harder time adopting the Okinawa diet. You know, most of us don't want to have miso soup for breakfast. <laughs> so I will talk a little bit about the Mediterranean diet and what the highlights of this diet are and that this has been shown to be effective both in terms of weight loss and glucose management. And the hallmark of the Mediterranean diet is an abundance of vegetables with one to one and a half pounds of vegetables being eaten each day. Wow. Okay. And um, I do want to spend a, a, a one minute talking about tomatoes, which are a fruit, but we usually talk about tomatoes being a vegetable. The, um, lycopene is the chemical that gives tomatoes the bright red color. And lycopene in current studies in the laboratory is being shown to be as effective as methotrexate in shrinking tumors. Mm. So it has very strong anti-cancer ability. Specifically for prostate and things. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. for prostate especially. Lycopene is oil soluble, not water soluble. So in order for it to be absorbed, it's gotta be taken with say olive oil or cooked. Mm. So just having a fresh tomato is not gonna give the full benefits. So there should be some oil um, also in the preparation. 
The Mediterranean diet also uh, promotes abundant fruits. Lots of grains, beans, and um, moderate amounts of nuts, maybe one serving a day. Um, Wild-caught Alaskan salmon has a lot of omega-3, which is a very healthy fatty acid that helps to protect the heart. Farmed salmon do not have the same levels of omega-3, and farmed salmon also contains some dyes, which can, they've already been banned in Europe. They're found to be quite harmful, but sticking to wild-caught Alaskan salmon once a week is a good recommendation. and. Uh, two eight ounce servings of lean meat a week. Um, the, the meats that are most harmful and should be avoided are things like pepperoni, salami, processed meats. Processed meats, right. Mm -hmm. But having a nice um, lean piece of steak twice a week, eight ounce servings is um, not harmful at all and it gives the body the protein um, that it needs. And I love this um, food pyramid that is on Dr. Andrew Wiles. Uh, website. He combines the Mediterranean and Okinawa diets um, and he also gives serving size recommendations so we print these out for our patients and give it to them or refer them to his uh, website. That's wonderful. I mean it seems like part of the, you know, we're talking about, we're joking about the fact that in the U.S. we have become the, the, the largest or the fattest uh, country in the nation in, uh, nation in the world. And part of it seems like from some of the things that I have read is related to the U.S. Um, uh, recommended pyramid in the back in the 60s and the 70s, mm -hmm. which seemed to be pushing more carbs yes. and uh, sugars at the expense of proteins and uh, whole types of, uh, uh, you know, protein sources that we now understand seems to have been reversed, so we should be having less carbs and more proteins, and that's one of the things that have, we've noticed over the past few years, an overall change in our dietary habits based on the newly recommended formulas which you're talking about here. Yes, and in the Mediterranean diet, the source of carbs are vegetables and fruits. Mm -hmm 